in the last lecture we created a pagination DTO now in this lecture we are going to add actual pagination while querying the tweets so whenever we are going to query the tweets there we are going to implement the pagination for that let's go to VS code and in here we have this get tweets endpoint so in the tweet controller we have this endpoint in order to get all the tweets based on a given user ID and from within this controller we are calling the get tweets method of tweet service and if we go to the tweet service and there we go to this get tweets method in here we are going to implement the logic for pagination and for that we are going to make use of this pagination query DTO so the first thing which we are going to do is for this get tweets method we are going to specify another parameter and let me call this parameter as page query DTO you can call it anything and this is going to be of type pagination query DTO and in order to use this pagination query DTO we also need to import it okay let's call it as page query DTO let me save the changes here and now when we are calling this get tweets method from this tweet controller there we also need to pass the value for page query DTO so for that we are going to pass this pagination query DTO and as we saw in the last lecture this pagination query DTO it is an object of type pagination query DTO which will have two properties the limit property and the page property right let's save the changes now let's go back to tweet service and let's again go inside this get tweets method and here when we are querying all the tweets based on a user ID while querying all the tweets we are going to implement the pagination as well and to implement the pagination this object which we are passing here in that object we can specify two properties and the two properties are skip and for now let me hard code the value as 10 and then take okay so here also let's hard code the value as 10 now the skip property tells how many records do we want to skip and after skipping those many records how many records do we want to take so for example here let me give a comment and let's say we want to fetch 10 records for page 1 so in that case limit is 10 and page is 1 so for the first page we want to skip 0 records and we want to take 10 records right then for the second page we want to skip the first 10 records and we want to take next 10 records so we want to take records from 11 to 20 so take also will be 10 so skip 10 records for page 2 and after skipping those 10 records take next 10 records so this is what skip and take tells now here we are hard coding the value but instead of hard coding we are going to get the limit and page in the request URL so for the take we are going to use the value of limit so for that we have this page query DTO which is an instance of this pagination query DTO so we can use that and there we will have the limit query parameter which will store the limit which we have specified in the route so this one is easy but how are we going to specify how many records do we need to skip let's understand that so let me remove this so for that we have a formula so let's say we have first page so for the first page we want to skip zero records and we want to take first 10 records because let's say limit is 10 so we want to take first 10 records for that what we can do is we have the page number which is one in this case from that we will subtract one okay so let me put it in parenthesis and then we are going to multiply it with the limit value so let's say limit is 10 so we are going to multiply it by 10 so for the first page how many records do we want to skip if you go with this formula 1 minus 1 will be 0 0 multiplied by 10 will be 0 so for the first page we are going to skip 0 records then let's say for the second page here page number is 2 so I'll replace it with 2 2 minus 1 will be 1 
1 multiplied by 10 will be 10. So for the second page, skip 10 records. And then after that, take next 10 records. So that's what we are specifying here using this limit. Then for the third page, let's say page is 3. So in the formula, it will be 3 minus 1 multiplied by whatever is the value for limit. So 3 minus 1 will be 2. 2 multiplied by 10 will be 20. So skip 20 records for the third page and take next 10 records because limit value is 10. So here the formula will be for skip the formula will be page minus 1 and whatever will be the result let's wrap it within parenthesis. So whatever will be the result of this expression we will multiply it with limit value. Okay so we are going to implement that logic here. So in the parenthesis we are going to get the page and we can get the page from page query DTO. So from there we can read the value of page and from there we are going to subtract 1 and whatever will be the result here we are going to multiply it with the limit value. So here I can say page query DTO dot limit and this will give us how many records do we want to skip and after that how many records do we want to take. So this limit will tell how many records do we want to take and with this our pagination logic is created. Now in order to test this what I have done is if I go to PostgreSQL database there in the tweet table I have created some more tweets. So here total we have 12 tweets. Okay now let's test the pagination logic. For that let's go to postman and here we are going to make a get request so let me go to this get tweet by user id and here we want to get all the tweets where the user id is 11 so here i'm also going to specify the query parameter so here first i'm going to set limit let's say limit is 3 so per page we want 3 records and then we will use end and then we will specify the page so let's say first we are going to get three records for the first page. So it should skip zero record and it should take first three records. If I send the request in the response, we have the tweet with ID one, we have the tweet with ID two, and we have the tweet with ID four because in the database also, we do not have any tweet with ID three. So first three tweet has been returned for page one. Now let's go back and let's change the page number to two. In this case, we should get next three tweets so if i send the request again so here we have tweet with id 5 we have tweet with id 6 and we have tweet with id 7 and then we don't have any tweet okay if i change the page to 3 and if i send the request here also we should only get three tweets in the result so we have tweet with id 8 here tweet with id 9 and tweet with id 10 now here if I change the limit to let's say 10 and page as 1 then in the first page we are going to get first 10 tweets. So if I scroll down here we have first 10 tweets. So the 10th tweet is the tweet with ID 11 and after that we do not have any tweet and if I change the page number to 2 then there are two remaining tweets. So in page 2 we should get those two tweets. If you see here we have tweet with ID 12 and tweet with ID 13. So in this way, we have implemented the pagination logic for querying the tweets. Okay, so this implementation is working for pagination for the tweets. But if let's say we also want to implement the pagination logic for users or comments. So we will have to write the same logic in the user service where we are fetching all the users and also in the comment service where we are fetching all the comments. But if you remember in the beginning of this section I mentioned that I want to write the pagination logic in such a way that it can be used for all type of entities. The pagination logic should not be entity specific. Currently this pagination logic is entity specific. It is only for querying the tweets. And also if you remember we discussed about the structure of the response. Currently, if you see, the response looks something like this, where we have all the tweets. 
but we do not have anything related to the page links or the metadata. In the introduction lecture of this section, we discussed that the response of the pagination looks something like this, where we will have the data property, the meta property and the links property. The meta property will contain the metadata like item per page, total items, current page and total page. And the links will contain the links for first page, last page, current page, next page and previous page. But currently our response does not look anything like this. So there are two things which we need to do. First of all, we have to make our pagination logic more generic so that it can be used for any entity. And also it should send a response similar to what we are seeing here. And we will do that in our coming lectures. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions from this lecture, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.